Dan Plasma, Full Contact Fighter, here with the legendary Skyscrape from Tap Out. How's it legendary. going? I, off that introduction, I'm fantastic. Awesome. You know, they really get me because they say, you call too many people legends, but you really are in this sport. You helped create this sport. And, you know, you guys were here from the ground up, building it from the grassroots, going to different gyms, you know, creating a face for television and the magazines uh, all over. You really helped build this from the ground up. How does it feel tonight to, to see this turned into a major motion picture and, uh, and NBC and Wesley Snipes and all this stuff from, from kind of like going and selling T-shirts in the back of a van? Uh, wow, ground up. It's, you know, we, we started the, the, the started tap out off of jujitsu mostly. Um, and, and we, we based tap out around a lot of jujitsu tournaments, but then as the sport of MMA, actually at the time it wasn't even MMA, it was just no, it was NHB, as you know. So we grew it, we were growing the sport, our company around grappling. And, and the sport of fighting was just getting so big that, and, and that was something we, we, we kind of attached ourselves to early on also. But um, we just knew that, that the UFC and, and mixed martial arts was going to be so big one day that I, actually I was doing a Nick the Tooth podcast the other day. He lives not too far from me. And um, he was telling me, basically he said, tell me A to Z. Fill in the in between, and I was telling him about the shows in San Pedro, Cage Combats we were going to, uh, all the all the Gracie tournaments, Kleber's um, uh, Jiu Jitsu tournaments, all the different things we did in between, and and it, I haven't told that story in a while, so the the reminiscing part, and then I see Eve Edwards tonight, who I was talking about, one of the first things. Of, of, of MMA that was ever on real TV. It was on like Fox. It was like Channel 2 News. And they covered Eves as he was a bank teller at a bank in Houston and he fought in a West Coast NHB fight. He fought in West Coast NHB 1 and 2 and they were in warehouses in Compton. And I was telling the story because it was so early on that to see something on real TV, real news about the sport that we were trying to help grow and and the story was Eve was a bank teller at a bank in Texas and he was fighting on the side they did this piece on him he beat Thomas Denny I think it was a cut there was a, a doc, doctor stoppage he goes back home the piece airs the bank fired him so that's where just that just put that in perspective he was fighting on the side working at a bank it aired and they fired him to now to where you're on NBCSN, you're on Fox. It's all, you know what I mean? It's, it's happened to the guy who got me this job, Officer Sean Gannon. He was a decorated uh, Boston law enforcement officer. And as soon as it came out that he was, you know, a police officer and also a fighter, you know, he got reprimanded. It's, uh, it used to be no holds barred in cage fighting. Yeah. Now it's mixed martial arts. And still, here tonight, we saw Henzo Gracie. We saw Gene LaBelle. We saw The Roots. I mean, I remember back, you know, I started doing traditional martial arts and writing for Inside Kung Fu magazine decades ago. And um, Gene LaBelle used to walk around with a rubber chicken. <laughs> and, and he used to choke people out with it. That's, you know, I mean, he, that guy is no joke. And, you know, uh, tonight, his officiating everything, it's so on point, you know. And, and seeing Henzo here and all the people who really, you know, like the, the godfathers of grappling, Big really. John. Big yeah, John. Big, you know. Big John, who was a fighter himself before refereeing. But what did you think about that stoppage? Uh, you're talking about the one last night? No, no, I'm talking about the one tonight, the leg kick stoppage. Oh, ooh, yeah. You know what's funny is I was kind of, I was actually talking to Elaine, John's wife, while the fight was happening, and I saw a couple leg kicks, and then I saw him, he, he was kicking his lead leg, and then I saw him kick the other leg. Mm. And he dropped him. So, man, that, that shows you. Marlon's no joke. Um, yeah. um, great. You rarely see that outside of Thailand. Really good ki leg kicks like that that draw people, that knock them out. Yeah, and, and he's got a great camp. He's with Frankie Almeida. So, Marlon's, Marlon's uh, tough. But um, it's great to see the sport go from that to something like this. And I'm local in the area. I've played basketball here a lot. This is a big basketball gym. So, I'm in Huntington Beach. So, it's cool to be in, in you know, from the roots of where we started, and Henzo was telling me earlier, he was saying out of the trunk of, of, of basically the trunk of our car, selling out of the back of a van, to, you know, we were fit eight figures, nine figures, ten figures, unbelievable. From yeah, to to something back to like this. I love coming to these fights. Brett Brett's a good friend of mine, so I come help promote, I help him promote the, the, the all the Bama fights. Uh, I'm friends with Ali and, and Ray, so it's cool to see. You go from somewhere and you're so big with the UFC, but you still have to have in between. You have to have everything. It's not just 
Super Bowl. You have to have all the grassroots and coming up. So it, it's cool for me. I like coming out. And I haven't been out in a while. I've kind of kind of been laying low. I've been doing, I have an exhaust company that I've been doing. So it's cool for me to come back and, and see a lot of familiar faces that I haven't seen in a minute because you get so caught up in, we were doing the UFC every week there was a UFC. And it's like a traveling circus. And you see these people every week and it's it's fun and it's cool. But then when you don't go for a while, it's like a, a flashback, like Elaine. I haven't seen Elaine in probably two years, John's wife, Big John's wife. And it's the reminiscing and talking about the family and my kids and her kids and this stuff. So it's cool to come out and, and, and help support these guys, but then catch up with, with the family, that your extended family that you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, well, you know, you guys are the original family of mixed martial arts. Rest in peace, mask. You know, what you guys brought to the table and what you guys created out of nothing was so creative and uh, was so captivating. Um, you know, thanks for changing the sport and bringing some intelligence and some creativity and, and, and something fun to it. And some weirdness. <laughs> and, and some and some bizarrity, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, that side of it was we just had, we, were, we didn't have any money, so we had to kind of create these characters to be our marketing. We couldn't afford to pay the, I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy. Those Horn, original print ads were crazy. We did go, and it was on purpose. A lot, you know what's funny is, I was talking to Eric Apple earlier. He's always on the underground. A lot of the stuff that we did back in the day came from the underground. We, the ads, there was an ad. Oh my God, this is freaking hilarious. We, there were two ads that we did. One of them, we had, there were, so there was this, these characters we created beside ourselves called the roaches. And it was cockroaches because cockroaches you can't get rid of. They'll never, <laughs> ever, ever, ever be gone. So we, ca we, we came up with this thing where it was the cockroaches. And there was, there was five of them, but the three main ones were punk-ass punk Charles and myself. So the ad we created was a family sitting at a dinner table with the milk on the table and, and you can you can see uh, you couldn't really see the faces it was it was blurred out of a family but the roaches like my character was coming down on a balloon and there was and and Charles's character was coming doing something over here but one of them one of the roaches was had cyanide it was pouring cyanide in the kids carton of milk um, and it was it all came from from the underground stuff. People were always telling us we're bad for the sport. We used we heard bad for the sport on underground, and we took it and used it as one of our slogans. So it, and and we, I liked everything that came from the underground. Yeah, we, a lot of a lot of this always. You're going to get that on on on, uh, on on forums. You know what I mean? So we liked it. But then there was another one. It was a picture of a girl in our in our warehouse. We put some lighting in there and we just, you were doing video. Back then we had to do videos. We had a kid, Adam B, who was a wrestler. He followed us around and we would just video stuff before, before our TV show, before Ultimate Fighter, before all that. He would follow us around and we would do our own video stuff. If you bought $99, well, actually it was $69. The first one was $69 worth of, of tap out gear. You got a free VHS tape at first, that tells you how long ago that was. Kids, you don't know what VH shit is. It's <laughs> it wasn't a little. Di it's not. They don't even have discs anymore. It's all. Anyways, it was a tape. You had to rewind it, um, or you got fined from uh, Blockbuster. Uh, so we would do these tapes, and we would do video stuff. So this girl, we, she was. We were just videoing her and taking pictures in our warehouse, and a, a shot happened to be of her from from right in front of her up. Well, we took that picture and made it look like she's laying in a bed, and here come the roaches again, like one's pulling the sheets off, one's trying to get underneath, and people said, oh, they're, now they're talking about raping and molesting girls, and I'm like, <laughs> so everything we did was to feed the underground people on the underground, on MMA.TV, because if they were, and that whole thing was, look, we don't care if they're talking good or bad about us, let them talk bad about us, they're talking about us. The characters, all this stuff. It was so people can talk about us, become our own marketing. Jeremy Horn and Pat Militich were the first two to, to word tap out in the UFC. It was like UFC. Ugh, it's been so long. I've told, I've talked about it. It's like 2019 or something like that. Whatever it was. But we couldn't pay them. We said, "Look, we'll give you clothes. <laughs> you you cool with that? We have no money, but maybe you know, we'll give you clothes and we'll give you 100 bucks. But it'll come in like two weeks when we can send it to you." <laughs> That's how it was. So it's great to see the growth of this sport. But think about this: it's not even legal in New York. So how really big is this sport, and how big can it get from here? It's still not there. I think it's still. I think you know, if you judge it between one and a hundred, I think it's somewhere at seventy. Listen, we're, we're doing a movie tonight with uh, Wesley Snipes and Jean Claude Van Damme. We got to get back in a minute, so it's borderline mainstream, I'd say. Yeah, I'm long-winded. Sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's the 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 sport's grown and it's done a lot of mainstream stuff, but 
but to put it in a hole, the New York thing, mm. the Madison Square Garden, that is where, that's, that's the Mecca right there. Um, so once it goes there, then, then you're on your way. But globally, it does what, what other sports can't do, football, baseball, basketball. Basketball kind of, yeah, but it's simple. You, you put two guys in a cage and they fight. It's like soccer. You, you know, you, all you need is a piece of paper. You can wad it up and kick it on the ground. Football is different in Australia. It's different. No rules football or, or uh, uh, rugby rules. You know what I mean? So it's different. So worldwide, yes. But here in the States, it's got to be everywhere. It has to be every single state to be at its full potential. Uh, one last question because I see your producers are uh, screaming at us over here. What do you think about Ronda Rousey? Ooh. Ah. He- the whole thing on Ellen the other day, talking about she wanted to thought about committing suicide right after the fight. I thought that I, was beautiful. I mean, it's empowering for somebody to share like their lowest moments, and this is a a woman who probably a lot of women and even men look up to, and and, and, and as a great hero. And you know, she was riding a bit too high. There was just a bit too much, kind of like, well, the difference between me and the other girls is there's no difference between fighters. We all have our teeth broken. We all have our noses broken. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, just a matter of skills. And Holly just had these yeah. underrated stand-up skills, which were just vicious. Yeah, and and. I, I, I talk about the, the, the suicide thing. It's it's great for her to open up and, and let that out. But then I've heard a lot of backlash on, on, on women saying, you know, people talking about, oh, so she is a role model to little women, boys, girls, men, everything. So so people have said, you basically said, you you don't want to, you're, you thought about it, but then you saw your boyfriend, you saw Travis, but that's what made you stop. So now... The backlash she's getting is you're saying you have to have a man to, to you know what I mean? That's, that's Give me a break. It could have been a grandmother. It could have been her mother. I exactly. mean, she, so, so I, I look at it both ways. It's great for her to open up and, 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 and say that because people won't. 